Hello, my name's Paul Nelson and I've been asked by uh, Harrier to do a uh, short video on uh, just packing your kit for a, maybe um, a mountain day, in the, a day out in the mountains or even, you know, maybe a race. So, and this is, I'm just basically going through, I'm sorry if I'm teaching to suck eggs for some people, but I think there's a few people that would be, who'd like to know this. And especially looking what happened in China the other week with, uh, you know, where people didn't have the right kit. And obviously things went horribly wrong. Um, so, yeah, so this is what we're going to do. So, uh, what we're going to start off with first is some of that you should never go out in the hills without, and that is your survival bag. That is, you know, could be a lifesaver if nothing else. So, straight away, that goes in at the back. First aid kit. Yet again, don't have, to, don't have to really say a lot about it, but obviously very important. So that should needs to go in. Now this is where we sort of, you know, you'll have lots of different ideas of what people think's right to carry and what's not to carry. Me personally, I never go out without a warm jacket. Um, and the reason being is I always work on the principle that if I'm out on the hills and I'm running, if I do fall over, because I am moving f faster than a walker, there's more chance you're gonna do yourself some sort of, you know, damage. I mean, the mountain rescue can take a while to get to you, so to not have something warm that you can put on. As we all know that the, um, you know, the, you know, as we all know, the, the hills, you know, if you're up there, you can, you can get cold very, very quickly. Um, so it's really important that you have something like that. This is a primal off one, which is brilliant because it's, even when it's wet, it will still retain heat as long as you have a, a windproof sort of barrier on it. It will keep you warm still even when wet. So, you know, it's worth investing in a sort of decent primer. This one's really good because as you can see, it packs up to next to nothing. So that goes in as well. Then, obviously, it goes without saying, waterproof bottoms, waterproof top. Yeah, again, I'll always put these in, in, a waterproof, in, in a waterproof bag. Just so if I have to pull things out while I'm out there, instead of pulling out loads of clothes, I'm just pulling out individual bags. And if it is raining, it doesn't matter because they'll stay, they'll stay dry. So that's the way I sort of do it. And the beauty of that is you put in these little stuff sacks and you can get them to squeeze down to sort of so little, which makes life, you know, for you as well, a lot easier. As always, loosen all these off so you can actually put the kit where you actually want it. Obviously, you've got to remember, you want it to be comfy on your back as well, so, you know, you have to pack it right for that way too. Yeah, again, I always do. Hat and gloves, I've got some waterproof outers there and a woolly hat. Doesn't matter, summer, you know, autumn, whenever, I always take that. What I do with that though as well, is I always put my spare batteries for my head torch in there. And then a very, so recharge, it won't last very long, but a spare head torch just in case you lose the other one and you know, you need one. Well, you know, you never know when you, you might need it, so. And if you might meet somebody who hasn't got a head torch and you might, you never know, you might have to save them. So, and because it's only tiny, you know, you're not really going to notice it in your kit. So that goes in there. And then, so basically, that there is done for what's on your back. For me, this sounds daft, is I'm hoping not to have to open this. So everything I do, that for me, is what I'm hoping is just going to be staying there. I know it looks a bit packed, but once you get that on your back, you know, so you can see there, I've sort of flattened off the back, so that'll be more comfortable for me when I'm running and hopefully shouldn't rub. All right, moving to the sort of front now. You should never go anywhere. You always need food and you don't know how much food you're going to eat. So I always have a couple of sort of bars and I definitely always have some gels with me, always. And they'll always just go in. And you can break with these little pockets. You can get quite a lot in these pockets. You can even, you know, you don't have to hold them on the same. You can sort of spread them around so you can try and even the weight out a little bit. What I've also got, and I use it's because um, 
in the dark, what you find sometimes, especially um, if you're going through farmers' fields and that, it's really hard sometimes to pinpoint where the actual style is. So I've got a really powerful little torch that I know I can use just to switch on. You know, I can't remember how many looms it is, but it's really powerful, and it'll just aim up. It'll just put a little, you know, a tower of light towards where I want to go, and I can use that because it is so tiny. This quite happily fits in a little pocket up here, and once it's in there. You know, it's just there. And also, if you do have to change your batteries for your head torch and that, you know, you, you don't have to faff around. You've got a light there already straight away to go. Um, another thing, yet again, which I found really useful, because you never know if you're going to need your toilet stop. So what I'll do there is just a little packet of tissues. I've got some dog poo bags in there, so I can put the tissues in the dog poo bags and I can take them off the hills with me. You know, everything else that I am going to leave out on the ground. And then that just slides in there. And I shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Obviously, head torch just in case that can actually go in the top there, but it's I have it right at the top, so I know if I need it, it's very quick to hand. So that's there. Then obviously fluids, You're not going anywhere that fluids. We're all different on our, what we you know, how much flu we take, and like I'm quite happy to fill up at streams. Not everybody wants to do that, but obviously high up on the lakes, and I'm quite happy to do that. Um, well, I know this might seem like overkill. The, the idea of what's in my back, I don't want to be stopping every ten seconds to get it out. So nine times out of ten, I'll have me a pair of gloves that I, I intend to use, and I'll have them with a buff because they're not very. They don't. They pack up quite well. You don't have to worry about them too much. And then, and they're just there. Also, which I will carry from time to time, is a poncho. Now, it might sound daft, but I, I sort of have this thing where I think, if I do have to stop and it is pouring down, I at least know I've got a complete dry set of waterproofs in there that I can put on and they'll keep me warm. For anything, if it's raining, your poncho, a poncho is a great bit of kit because you can put it over, you don't have to take anything off, you can put it off. And also, it's quite long on the leg. So even if you're wearing shorts, it'll give your legs, at least your upper thigh, where you can lose a lot of heat. Heat. It'll give that some protection. So, you know, I sometimes I'll carry. You know, if I know it's going to be sort of a really really wet day, I will definitely carry a poncho around. You know, I will definitely take that with me, and that will just you know, that will just save me from all sorts of uh, all sorts of sort of issues if I need it, and I can just get it out when I need it, and it's just there. I know some people say that's overkill, but, you know, better to be safe than sorry. And as always, you never go any, anywhere without a map and a compass. So, lucky enough, I've got this cloth one at the lakes, and I know I can just squeeze that in. And that will do the job whenever I need it, and obviously the compass is at hand as well. You know, a lot of shorts have pockets on them, so you don't have to always necessarily stuff it into your sack. You could just have it in your shorts and uh, however you want it. And then that is basically my kit pack for the hills. Obviously, on it goes. And I know, no matter what I come to during the day, I am going to be sort of bomb-proof. And it's going to do the job that I need it to do. And the last thing you want to do is be unsafe on the hills. Right, for some people that'll be that'll seem as a massive overkill. But you know, I think times have proven that it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, I hope you find this helpful. Cheers, thank you very much. Good night.